Income tax 2022-2023 earned income tax credit the EIC with three or more children tax software example. Let's do some wealth preservation with some tax preparation. Here we are in our example form 1040 populated with Lacert tax software. You don't need tax software to follow along, but it's a great tool to run scenarios with. You can also get access to the form 1040 related forms and schedules at the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov, starting point. Single filer, Mr. Anderson, live in 90210 Beverly Hills, 100,000 W-2 income, which is way over the threshold for the earned income tax credit. But that's our traditional starting point, so that's where we'll start. We've got the 12,950 on the standard deduction, 87,050 for the taxable income. Page number two, calculating the tax at 14,774, 15,000 for the payments. That gets us to our 226. Let's go back to page one. We want to think about an earned income tax credit if we had three qualifying children or more because the earned income tax credit doesn't give any more benefit past those three children. So we'll think about that. Remembering that you typically want to think about the curve in terms of how high your income is and what they support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Maximum credit will be per uh, area or per level of one child or zero children, one child, two children, three or more children, and then it's slightly different as well if you're married or not married, although it's not doubled when married. And therefore, especially when we get up to these higher numbers of children, you can imagine if three, if someone that had three children that had head of household filing status married another person that had three children of head of household filing status, that there could be a significant decrease in the benefit from the earned income tax credit because the credit doesn't change in terms of the maximum credit. It's at the 6,935 and the maximum income threshold doesn't double, but only goes to the 59,187. And you're not gonna get any more benefit from the, th the three kids. Now you'd have six kids, right? Instead of, and you're still gonna cap out at three kids in order to get a benefit. So we'll take a look at that as well. And we'll try to plot out kind of a graph of what this looks like. So it's kind of interesting. Just wanna point out that on those major life events, on the lower income side of things, if you're dealing with the child tax credit or getting a child tax credit and the earned income tax credit, it kind of seems like the credits are designed or intentionally or unintentionally to kind of disincentivize marriage in some cases. So you'd want to think about whether or not it would be, you know, you want to take that into consideration. Uh, so it's not like a shock. Uh, and so we'll take a look at that. On the higher income side of things, marriage is usually beneficial because most things double on the higher income side, like the standard deduction doubles and the tax tables double. Okay. So we'll dive into that as well. All right. So we know that when we add three children, that's going to be basically moving us if we were single to head of household status. So let's do that first. All right. So Mr. Anderson now head of household status, I'm not married, three kids. We've got Joe, a uh, Joe, that should be Jill, Joel, Jill. And then we just started naming them by numbers after their child number three. And then, so that means that our standard deduction went up to 19,400. We still don't get the earned income tax credit because of course we are over the income threshold in order to do it. The maximum income threshold to get anything would be close to 60,059,187. So let's do our graphing thing so that we can basically see as our income goes up, what happens to this credit with three or more uh, children. So I'm going to go back on over and say, all right, let's bring my income. Let's do increments of 5,000. Let's start it at 5,000 and see what happens. Okay. Passando, we're going to say that we have uh, 5,000 
and so obviously our 19,004 is greater that than that so no taxable income but may still get a benefit from the earned income tax credit because it's refundable and it's at the 2261 so let's go ahead and graph this out so here we have wages 5,000 2261 let's bring it up to 10,000 we'll just do increments of 5,000 and bring it on up just to graph it on out bring it on up to graph it on out I'm going to get rid of the 15,000 withheld just so we don't have to deal with that. And that's going to give us the uh, 4511. So let's say, okay, now it went up to 4511. The maximum is 69. So let's 6935. Let's go up to 15,000. 15,000. 15,000. Can I get a 15? Can I get a 15,000? There we have it. 15,000. And that results in to 6761 not at the max yet 6761 let's go to 20,000 20,000 can I get a 20,000 20,000 20,000 do I see a 20,000 at 20,000 we get the 6935 that's at the max now so that now we're at 6935 let's go to 25,000 25 25 25 25 25,000 and bring that on over. That's at now the 5904. So we're gonna say, all right, now it's going back down. 5904. Oh, that's 25,000. 30,000. 30,000. 30,000. Let's do that. Boom. That brings it to the 4851. So 4851. 35,000. 35, 35, 35,000, 35,000. I should have just, there it is. That brings it to 3798. So 3798, 40,000. We're getting close to the upper threshold. It's going back down now, of course, as income goes up, not 400,000. That's too many zeros. It's only one too many. That's too many two seven four five only one too many crying out loud now you got two little zeros here and you're lucky this is just a practice problem it's ridiculous all right calm down for 45,000 45,000 let's see what happens then one six nine two one six nine two let's go to fifty thousand almost there 50,000 boom okay so now we're at 639 so 639 and 55,000 is going to be over the threshold for single it's it's a uh, higher for married but it's 55,000 that should be over the threshold and that should take it to zero boom okay so just to get an idea so when you see this graph, it, it says, you know, it caps out here, but really you're not going to get that full credit at the AGI cap. That's when it goes basically to zero. You don't get anything. If I was to graph this, let's do ahead and insert the graph to get a pictorial representation. Because pictures, I like pictures. That's how I understand stuff. So <laughs> we've got as the income goes up, the amount of the credit, store credit, store credit, store credit goes up. It caps off at that uh, 6935 around the 20,000 and then it goes back down again. So there we have it. And so then uh, I can I can compare that to what's on our 1040 instructions. Similar process, except the instructions are, you know, have a lot more plot points, right? So if we had three or more three or more over here then as our income goes up then the amount of the credit goes up goes up goes up we're over here three or more incomes going up the credit goes up and then we're still going up over twelve thousand of income and then it's going to cap out at that six nine so it's still going up and then it caps out at six nine three five which is around the 15,400. And then it stays there for some time, stays there for some time, 6935 until 
you get to 20,200 about, and then it starts going back down. So if I look at our graph here, there's the 20,000, it's maxed out 25,000, it should be at 5,904. So 25, 25, 25,000, 25,000, it's at the 5,904. And then if I go down to the 30,000, 4,851, 30,000, 30,000 is over here. 30,000, 4,851, and so on. So I think I got those plot points hopefully mostly right. So you can get an idea of the visual chart here. All right, so so that's the general idea. Now, if I added, let's go back to the 20,000 where it's maxed out. Let's go back to the 20,000. So it's maxed out, 20,000 credit maxed out at the 6935 and let's add another kid. Why not? Why not at this point? I don't even know. These kids are already driving me crazy. One more is not gonna hurt. All right, so now we got four kids, still head of household, and four kids over here. It's just ridiculous, a madhouse. Only earning 20,000, so I barely got, you know, the money to hold on to these kids. <laughs> uh, but I'm still at the 6935 because you don't get any more benefit from the EIC above that threshold. Now, now if now if they were married, like if I if I go to married, the threshold will change. So you can imagine another curve, but it's not exactly doubling everything because you still have the maximum at the 6935 and you're only having a, a maximum AGI. So you can imagine this whole bell curve basically kind of, or whatever, whatever you want, this curve basically shifting to the right would be kind of, kind of the idea so that, so that the maximum uh, income level you'd get would be here instead of here but the still you have the max here. So you, you can imagine the situation that if you had two people that got married and let's say they had like, like one has two kids and one has one kid. Or kids? Kids? Or something like that, then they could be maximizing the credit of 3,733 and 6,164 between the two of them. And if they got married, then they would have like three kids, which would bring the maximum credit up, uh, to to here but it but you'd probably end up in a worser situation even then even though you're going up to another tier level on the married level because of the because of the income thresholds but but notice if you had like one had two kids six one six four plus three seven three three and you're maxing it out that would be at the uh nine thousand nine thousand eight ninety seven if you're maximizing these two out and then if you were married and you got three kids, then it would be at the six, nine, three, five, but it gets even gets worse. If for example, you had, you had two people head of household that were maximizing the 6,164 times two, six, one, six, four times two, and then you get married, you're losing the benefit from the earned income tax credit of one kid altogether, right? Because you don't get any of that credit. And then if you had two people, that had three or more kids, right? If they had three kids, let's say they had more, you know, let's we'll say they both had three kids. You could just say, okay, well, if they get married, do they get a benefit for six kids now? No, it's still capped at three kids. So then you could see that would be a big disincentive, you would think, on the married side of things. So let's just see, let's just kind of get an idea of that. If I was to say, okay, there's three, four kids, three kids doesn't matter. Uh, for the single filer. So let's say we had, let's write it down here. We've got head of household, head of household, three or more, or more kids. And we're going to say then the income is 20,000. And we said the earned income credit is going to be 6935. 6935. Is that what we said it was? Yeah. And then we said that the refund according to this calculation just the total refund for this example because that includes the child tax credit one is nine five six zero so nine five six nine five six zero okay and then if i multiply that times two i imagined two people filing head of household their income total would be twenty thousand earned income tax credit between the two of them filing separately thirteen eight seventy and their refund 
between the two of them would be 19, 120. So now what if they were married? Married? We know the income would go up, doubling it to 40. What happens to the earned income credit and the refund? So let's do that. Let's go back on over and imagine we had two people that are in this scenario with three or more kids and whatnot, and then they got married. And so now we're gonna have six kids. I got four here, but it doesn't matter after three anyway. So let's add six kids, married couple. All right, so hopefully I got it all correct here. So now we got married filing statuses, married filing joint. You got you got Mrs. and Mr. and Mr. and Mr. Anderson. Now we have to have a whole nother statement for our dependents over here because there's too many to fit on the lines they provided. But we got one, two, three, four, five, six kids now. Six kids. And we're going to say, okay, then 40,000 of income because we had two people that had 20,000. So they were maximizing their 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 benefit before from the earned income tax credit at 6935 and the standard deduction doubles like you would normally think you know something would double if married uh the tax rates are adjusted for married but the the credit here is now calculating at the 4036 for the earned income tax credit so 4036 4036 now remember this the maximum tax credit was 6935 that they were both getting before when they had three or more kids but had 20,000 of income because the 40,000 income they the incomes don't double right so you can imagine this curve kind of shifting to the right but it doesn't like doesn't like double so they're not so they're actually getting less than the maximum credit even though they got six kids now and and the 40,000 of income married were which as opposed to 20 and 20 before and so the, that comes out to 9661. So 9661, 9661. So you can see, again, you, you could come up with some substantial differences between two people filing 40,000 income between the two of them, 2020 each, and the earned income tax credit, you know, could have a significant difference between if they got, if they got married. And it's kind of a sad situation that the, <laughs> the <laughs> The, the allocation of the kids and, and whatnot, I mean, that could be a significant difference on the income could have some influence on, you know, uh, the whole decision making process, but it is what it is. So you want to be, so you want to be aware if like, if you're in that kind of situation, then you got to think uh, that there's going to be tax, you know, the tax consequences could be kind of significant and you want to make sure you're kind of mapping them out so that, uh, so it's not like a shock. Uh, if you get married and you're like, hey, wait a second, this came, <laughs> it's a lot less than we would have got as two separate head of household filers. And again, on the higher income side of things, if you don't have those refundable credits, usually getting married is a benefit. It's not disincentivized by the tax code because because the standard deduction actually doubles uh, if, if you got married, which usually the incomes don't exactly double because if on the upper income side of things, because usually one person possibly has more income than the other because they're splitting up the house and whatnot. And then on page number two, the tax rates usually are reflected as you would kind of expect if you had twice as much income so that it doesn't disincentivize the marriage situation. But for some reason these, well, it's hard to figure all this stuff out, but the refundable tax credits kind of uh, create weird incentives. So that is that. Also remember, of course, that that uh, the other income, such as Schedule C income instead of W-2 income, would also be earned income and, and have a similar function of it increasing and decreasing according to the curve uh, as Schedule C income goes up and down, business income, and other income that's, that's more passive income, like uh, investment income, does not have an effect on that curve of income. And if there's too much investment income, you can actually uh, lose the earned income tax credit because if you had a significant amount of interest income and dividend income, that would indicate you got a significant amount of money in the checking account or and or in the uh, in, in investments. So you would think you wouldn't need uh, the earned income credit in that case.